For motorhome and other special purpose applications, General Motors offers its tough and durable P12 chassis. Its standard power plant is the powerful 7.4 liter L21 gasoline V8 engine, which features advanced powertrain controls. This Certified Plus training video presentation and its accompanying reference booklet are designed to overview the powertrain controls on the 7.4 liter L21 engine. Following a brief overview of the 7.4 liter L21 engine, we'll thoroughly review the powertrain control module, fuel system, engine management, ignition system with emphasis on the coil near plug ignition, the throttle actuator control system, emission systems, and then finish up with diagnostics. The 7.4 liter gasoline engine available on the P12 chassis has engine RPO code L21. It produces 265 horsepower at 4,000 RPM with 390 foot-pounds of torque at 2,800 RPM. For 1999, the L21 engine is basically a carryover from 1998 and features the engine management system with powertrain controls that are similar to the Gen 3 V8 engine in the Corvette, Camaro, and Firebird, and the new CK truck. And the throttle actuator control, or TAC system, used on the Corvette. The engine management system uses the new 32U powertrain control module, or PCM, located on the upper radiator support bracket. This PCM monitors and controls engine and transmission functions, as well as the 8-injector sequential fuel injection system and the coil near plug electronic ignition that features an integrated coil driver module for each spark plug. The 32U PCM uses two 80-pin connectors to communicate with the various inputs and outputs. Additionally, the PCM features a flash programmable double EEPROM which allows the module to be updated for service and mandated drivability enhancements. If the PCM requires replacement, the technician must program the new PCM according to the vehicle's VIN. This is done using the Tech2 scan tool and a TechLine terminal with the latest TechLine software. If the PCM is being replaced, service programming, idle learn, and the functional check must all be performed. However, if an existing PCM is just being reprogrammed, only the idle learn and functional check must be performed. For service programming of a new PCM, the Tech2 request info procedure must be performed on the new PCM after it's been installed on the chassis. Then, the vehicle calibrations are downloaded off the TechLine terminal to the Tech2 and programmed into the PCM through the Datalink connector. The PCM receives both a power feed and ignition feed. Ground for the PCM is G102, located on the thermostat housing bolt at the front center of the engine block. The PCM monitors and controls the circuits and functional operation of the fuel pump and fuel injectors. The fuel rail and injectors on the L21 engine are mounted to the lower section of the intake manifold. The fuel rail is a single inline design made up of a composite material. Each of the fuel injectors are secured to the rail with a retaining clip. The fuel pressure regulator is on the return fuel line and located at the rear of the fuel rail assembly. At the front of the fuel rail assembly is the fuel pressure test port for testing fuel pressure. Fuel system pressure can be checked using fuel pressure gauge J34730-1A or equivalent. System pressure should be between 56 and 62 PSI. The 7.4 liter L21 engine uses a mass airflow engine management strategy that includes a mass airflow sensor located in the air duct that measures the amount of air entering the intake. The arrow on the sensor indicates the direction of airflow 
and must be pointing toward the throttle body. If it's installed backward, the fuel system will run rich. Also, use care during service to align the indexing marks on the sensor connector and wiring harness connector. Airflow is measured using a hot wire method. Inside the mass airflow sensor, a wire is heated to a specific temperature. Heat loss is directly proportional to the amount of air flowing past it. The sensor measures the power required to maintain the wire temperature and converts this value into frequency monitored by the PCM. Another sensor in the air intake system is the intake air temperature sensor. This sensor is a thermistor that changes resistance values as intake air temperature varies. The PCM uses this information to control the outputs to various other controls. The manifold absolute pressure sensor is located at the front of the lower intake manifold and measures intake manifold pressure. While its primary role is for diagnostics and barometric pressure sensing, it becomes a vital input if the mass airflow sensor fails. If the sensor does fail, the PCM switches over to a speed density fuel management strategy. This can produce rich, sluggish performance and will illuminate the service engine soon light as well as set a DTC. Located on cylinder bank one, above the spark plugs, is the engine coolant temperature sensor. This sensor identifies engine coolant temperature or operating temperature for the PCM and the instrument cluster temperature gauge. The 7.4 liter L21 engine uses four wire heated oxygen sensors or HO2S. A four oxygen sensor arrangement is monitored by the PCM for exhaust oxygen content. One heated sensor is located in the intermediate exhaust pipe takedown of each cylinder bank and are referred to as bank one, sensor one, and bank two, sensor one. The other two heated sensors are located after the catalytic converter in each exhaust pipe. These are referred to as bank one, sensor two, and bank two, sensor two. For fuel management, the pre-catalyst heated oxygen sensors directly contribute to short-term fuel trim, long-term fuel trim, and pulse width at the injectors during closed loop operation. The vehicle speed signal used by the PCM is produced by the vehicle speed sensor and the speedo adapter module. Located on the transmission tail shaft housing, the vehicle speed sensor is a magnetic induction type sensor. As the reluctor on the transmission output shaft rotates, the sensor reads the AC voltage signal produced, which is 40 pulses per revolution. The speedo adapter module processes the speed sensor pulses and provides a signal to the PCM at 4,000 pulses per mile. The module also provides a sensor signal to the instrument cluster and electronic brake control module. The park neutral position switch is located on the lower left side of the transmission housing. Its input to the PCM indicates if the transmission shift lever is in either the park or neutral position, or if it's in one of the other driving positions. Another input to the PCM is the AC clutch status signal. This signal tells the PCM if the air conditioning is either on or off to compensate for engine load changes caused by the AC compressor. The PCM adjusts for the load changes by adjusting timing and throttle angle. An output of the PCM is the starter relay inhibit feature. This allows the PCM to disable the starter if the engine is running, if the starter is operated for an extended period, or if the park neutral position switch is not in the park or neutral position. To avoid starter motor overheating, the PCM allows the starter to be cranked for 15 seconds before disabling. Releasing the ignition key and turning it again to the start position will repeat the 15 second cycle. If the starter motor disengages repeatedly after just two seconds of cranking, check the crankshaft position sensor operation. Other outputs of the PCM include control of the tachometer, 
Illumination of the service engine soon malfunction indicator lamp to indicate a engine control malfunction. And illumination of the reduced engine power lamp to indicate a throttle actuator control system malfunction. An illuminated reduced engine power lamp is always accompanied by an illuminated service engine soon lamp. The 7.4 liter L21 engine features a multiple coil ignition system known as coil near plug. Eight ignition coil modules controlled sequentially are mounted on the valve covers. Short secondary wires carry the voltage to the spark plugs just below the coil modules. Each module's role is to signal its coil for the generation of secondary voltage. All timing decisions are made by the PCM which triggers each module individually. This system puts out very high ignition energy for plug firing. Because the wires are shorter, less energy is lost to wire resistance. Both ignition and fuel are sequential at startup. This is accomplished with a highly accurate position sensing system. With this system, the PCM reads the camshaft position sensor at key on. After reading the first 90 degrees of crankshaft rotation, the PCM knows the combustion events for each cylinder and sequential ignition and fuel injection can occur. The major input is the 24X crankshaft position sensor located at the lower front of the engine. While the sensor signal identifies cylinder pairs at top dead center, the camshaft position sensor at the rear of the engine identifies which cylinder is at which stroke. In this way, the cylinder on the compression stroke is identified. The crankshaft position sensor reluctor uses 24 notches of two different widths positioned every 15 degrees. This pulse width encoded pattern allows piston position identification within 90 degrees of crank rotation. This design offers precise accuracy and quick startups. The camshaft position sensor puts out a 12 volt battery voltage square wave signal. The crankshaft position sensor outputs approximately a 5 volt square wave signal. On the 7.4 liter L21 engine, there are two knock sensors, one for each cylinder bank. The sensors are threaded into a water jacket on each side of the cylinder block. When the knock sensors identified spark knock, the PCM reduces ignition timing advance to avoid engine damage. The 7.4 liter L21 engine uses an electronically controlled throttle system called TAC, which stands for Throttle Actuator Control. The TAC system consists of a throttle actuator control module, the PCM, a throttle actuator motor, throttle position sensor, accelerator pedal position sensor, the cruise control switch, and stop lamp switch. The system uses an actuator that moves the throttle blade in unison with the accelerator pedal, eliminating mechanical cables and linkages from the pedal to the throttle body. The throttle actuator control module is located directly above the accelerator pedal bracket. Proper engine operation requires that the PCM and throttle actuator control module work together via serial data. There are two redundant serial data lines between the PCM and the module that send identical signals. Power to the throttle actuator control module is supplied from the instrument panel fuse block. Just as with the PCM, Ground for the throttle actuator control module is G102 located on the thermostat housing. The driver requested throttle position is an input from the accelerator pedal position sensor to the throttle actuator control module. Using this information, the PCM requests the module to position the throttle blade via the throttle actuator motor. The accelerator pedal position sensor is located at the pivot pin of the accelerator pedal linkage. This sensor is actually three individual potentiometer type sensors. Accelerator pedal position is based on input to the throttle actuator control module 
from the three sensors. When checking the signals with the scan tool, accelerator pedal position sensor one signal increases as the accelerator pedal is depressed from below 1.1 volts at 0% pedal travel to above 2.1 volts at full pedal travel. Accelerator pedal position sensor two signal decreases from above 3.9 volts at 0% travel to below 2.9 volts at full pedal travel. Accelerator pedal position sensor three signal decreases from above 3.2 volts at 0% pedal travel to below 3.1 volts at full travel. By identifying pedal position and rate of change of the position, the sensor identifies pedal force when the driver is requesting rapid acceleration from the engine. The throttle actuator control module controls the throttle actuator motor to position the throttle plate in the air intake passage. The motor is mounted directly on the throttle body assembly. On the opposite side of the throttle body assembly is the throttle position sensor. As the throttle plate rotates, the sensor also rotates and signals the throttle actuator control module of the throttle plate position. The throttle position sensor is actually two individual sensors in one housing. When viewing the sensor signals on the scan tool, throttle position sensor one signal increases from below 1.1 volts at 0% throttle to above 3.7 volts at 100% throttle. Throttle position sensor two signal decreases from above 3.9 volts at 0% throttle to below 1.2 volts at full throttle. The multiple sensor voltages of the accelerator pedal position and throttle position sensors are to ensure that each system is working properly. Another input to the throttle actuator control module is the cruise control switch located in the multifunction turn signal lever located on the steering column. The final input to the throttle actuator control module is the stop lamp switch located at the top of the brake pedal linkage. This input is vital to cruise control operation. When the brake pedal is depressed, the stop lamp switch closes and disables the cruise control. If the throttle actuator control system malfunctions, the reduced engine power lamp and service engine soon lamp will illuminate as shown earlier. Additionally, the PCM will retard engine performance. In this emission system features portion of the program, we'll cover the crankcase ventilation system, the evaporative emission system, and the exhaust gas recirculation system. The 7.4 liter L21 engine uses a crankcase ventilation system to remove crankcase vapors and relieve crankcase pressure. This system uses filtered fresh air from the intake manifold to mix with crankcase gases in the engine. A PCV valve located on cylinder bank one regulates the amount of flow in the crankcase ventilation system. On the evaporative emission or EVAP system, the fuel filler cap seals the system. With the vehicle at rest, vapors from evaporating fuel in the fuel tank move to the EVAP canister. Under certain conditions, the PCM will operate the evaporative emission purge solenoid valve, allowing the fuel vapors from the canister to enter the intake manifold when the engine is running. The EVAP canister or canisters are mounted on the right side frame rail and the evaporative emission purge solenoid is located on the intake manifold. The exhaust gas recirculation system mixes exhaust gases with intake air to lower combustion temperatures during certain engine operating conditions. The exhaust gas recirculation valve located on the side of the intake manifold is controlled by the PCM and regulates the amount of exhaust gas mixing with intake air. Too much flow causes improper combustion and not enough flow causes engine spark knock. For scan tool diagnostics, the data link connector is located at the floorboard directly below the steering column. Pin number two is class two data. 
Pin 4 is serial data ground. Pin 5 is the PCM ground. Pin 12 is the ABS electronic brake control module. And pin number 16 is the data link connector power. While the powertrain onboard diagnostic system check must be performed first, the service information does have an electronic ignition system diagnosis. For diagnosing fuel and ignition problems, the Tech 2's cylinder balance test can be used to turn off each of the cylinders by disabling fuel injector or ignition coil operation. Also, the J34142-B test light is used to verify feed voltage at the coil modules. Regardless, always follow the service information diagnostics. The 7.4 liter L21 engine powertrain controls should always be diagnosed using a strategy. Here's a review of diagnostic highlights within this approach. This includes establishing communications between the vehicle and the scan tool to check for diagnostic trouble codes stored in history. Your experience with previous OBD2 scan tool diagnostics directly relates to the 7.4 liter L21 engine. The engine scan tool data list offers tremendous insight for diagnostics. For example, warm-up information lets you identify the number of warm-up cycles since an emissions related code was set. When trying to duplicate a condition, you can identify when the 40th warm-up cycle will occur and data will be cleared automatically. From the powertrain main menu, use Capture Info prior to beginning a diagnostic procedure. By capturing info and retaining this history in the scan tool, you can record the current operational parameters without losing the parameters that brought the customer in for service. Above all, note that the P12 chassis 7.4 liter L21 engine powertrain controls use UART communication for anti-lock brakes. Therefore, remember to use the scan tool to view all related controllers when diagnosing a condition that involves more than one system. The P12 chassis 7.4 liter L21 engine uses a state-of-the-art engine management system to ensure our customers get tremendous levels of performance. When service is necessary, customers expect you to deliver high performance as well by fixing it right the first time, on time, every time. To earn attendance and completion credit for this course, take the test found in the accompanying course book and phone in your answers. After viewing the video and reading the course booklet, find the course test at the end of the booklet in section Q. To take the test, use a blank piece of paper. Record your social security number and the course number on the paper, along with the question numbers and answers to the test. In this way, you'll have everything handy when you place the call. Once you have completed the test, dial 1-800-446-8724 to receive your credit. The system will prompt you to enter your social security number. Use the keypad on a touch-tone phone for each of the digits. Then press the pound key. The system will repeat the number it receives. To verify this number, Press the pound key again. Next, enter the numeric portion of the course number for the test you're taking, followed by the pound sign. Do not attempt to enter the decimal point or any letters. The system will then prompt you to enter your test answers. The system will not read the test questions. You will be prompted with a question number. If your answer is A, press number 1. If the answer is B, press number 2. If your answer is C, press number 3. And if your answer is D, press number 4. Continue answering the questions as the system prompts you. After you've answered all questions, the system will repeat the questions along with your answers. If they are correct, verify them by pressing the pound key. If you want to change an answer, press the star key you'll be asked which answers you want to change. 
this phone-in test procedure replaces the previously used mail-in procedure. In fact, you can use this phone-in procedure for all existing as well as future CPT courses. With this phone-in system, your test results are immediately entered into the Service Training Management System database, known as the STEMS database. The system will also give you immediate test results on how well you did. If you are successful, course completion certificates are mailed within three to four weeks. Study the CPT materials carefully before taking the test. Good luck.